50, 50,000 pupils are now taught in alternative provision schools, which provide education to pupils outside mainstream education. And research by the BBC shows a 71% rise in temporary and fixed term exclusions in the most deprived areas of England in the last four years. That's four times the rate in less deprived areas. The Department for Education says every child should benefit from a high quality education and equal opportunity regardless of their background. Our special correspondent, Ed Thomas, has spent a week in an independent alternative provision school in Manchester, and this is his extended report. The number of children excluded from deprived schools is soaring. Many end up in places like this. Alternative provision. Can you count how many times you're excluded? Today, super. I've got to be here for six weeks, <laughs> and I've been here for six months now. So, you name the safeguarding issues, we've got them tenfold. <coughs> Drugs is an influence, alcohol is an influence, gangs are an influence. We're dealing with challenging young people. That is the reality. Arthur Hay Alternative Provision School educates some of Manchester's most vulnerable children. We've got self farmers We've got people who are extremely volatile, people who are great at percent of the time can be angelic, but then 20% of the time highly dangerous. Most told us they've repeatedly been given fixed term exclusions. From here I've been excluded about seven times, and then in my other one I've got excluded about more than that, I've kind of gone. List the things that happened that led to you being excluded. Fighting, throwing up features, just pissing about. We've learned fixed term exclusions from the top 10% most deprived schools in England have increased by 70% over the last four years. Four times the rate of the least deprived. This is a key stress for inmates, so we're going to have from 11 to 13. Adam's training on the job to become a qualified teacher. And this is one of the school's most challenging classes. These pupils desperately need his help. They're distracted on their phones and arguing. It's too much for 14 year old Cameron. Why did you remove yourself? Everyone was arguing, it was getting too loud. In just 10 minutes, the teaching inside the classroom comes to an end. Do you feel like you're learning? Yeah, but I want to go back to my old school because I want better education and stuff. Kids who misbehave stop the learning. To send these children here, schools pay £12,000 a year. That's around twice the cost of a place in Main Street. The initial damage was done by a child. An independent school. Rated as inadequate. Get the resources together to get that covered. And the head teacher told us they needed more money, more resources. I think for it to now, funding's not available at the minute. We're looking at grammar schools getting support from central government, um, and it's important to recognise the other side of that. Shutting the door now, boss. Every day, the school manages difficult situations. <laughs> 48 kids, six qualified teachers. When we filmed in the last week of term, two were off sick. Children in this classroom now without a teacher. They've been like that for more than 10 minutes. Many here have complex needs. This pupil didn't appear to speak English, but the school said he could understand some words. Should he be here? Probably not. It's homeschooled place than here. The issue with that child is whilst he's got a language barrier, he's also got additional learning needs, which haven't fully been established yet. Afton is in charge of pastoral care. In crisis, many children turn to her. What's the reality of the backgrounds of these kids? Very, very, very sad. When they've come into school, they've been absolutely shattered. You know, they were sleeping rough. Um, they put a bed up for them, just so that they could have a good trip, and fed them, watered them. <laughs> There's a growing risk from gangs, violence, and drugs. Spies can have kids collapse. Which spies? When white to ghost and collapse to the floor. Weed, cocaine, pills. Have you seen children coming in with knives? Um, yeah, I have. A knife, my bag. We dealt with it immediately, obviously. 
this is how the other side live, unfortunately, and that's a side that isn't shown. Um, but we deal with it every single day. The mission here is to work alongside mainstream schools to keep kids in education. So when they do lose control, the fallout is carefully managed. And pupils like me, Caden, can learn. Everyone should get education the same as other kids. Yeah. Do you feel you deserve that as much as other kids? Sometimes. Time and time again, pupils told us this school was making a difference. We still hold us about the education like everybody else, and I think we get it better here than most people do in mainstream. What's this school given you? Without this, what will happen to you? Get a few calculations from it. Better than mainstream. What do you think? Where long periods were spent educated in isolation rooms. We've got a long lag. I think it's about like a month in there at one point. Some days it'd be 11 hours, 10 hours. Confined places. We just sit there and do nothing all day. If you put too much flour on, you're going to drive the dough out. The reality is that last year, less than one in 20 children in alternative provision schools received a C or above in GCSE maths and English. And each permanently excluded child is estimated to cost taxpayers £370,000 in lifetime education, benefits, healthcare and criminal justice costs. What's your message to people? people say, do you know what, it's just a DOS and this kid shouldn't be here. And really challenge that notion. We've got students that come back to us two, three years down the line from Shake Our Hands. Thank you for turning the life around. That student might have left us with three GCSEs. Pretty poor grades, but we've helped turn the life around. That is progress, that is success. And if we're not doing that, who else is doing it? This is just one example of alternative provision. The owner wanted us inside to see the challenges, but also the importance of education outside of mainstream. The Department for Education says it wants all young people to receive an education that fosters ambition, no matter their background. But it's clear from our findings, a disproportionate number of children from deprived areas are being excluded. Q. Head's very fast, Ken. Head's almost there, our special placement.